السلام عليكم. I want to sincerely thank Ustad Hussein and Imam Daoud Yassin because they made my job so much easier, mashallah. It was the perfect prelude into this workshop because when we think about all of the aspirations that we want to accomplish, me, myself, I have four boys, mashallah. I work and I love doing community projects, whether it be with kids or women in building sisterhood. So I realized that coming into Ramadan, I always felt like I was in survival mode. And I was tired of it. I said, how can I shift gears and make myself thrive during this time? How can I be inspired by all of these amazing lectures, these inspirational talks, and turn it into a reality within our lives? So alhamdulillah, I, um, I've studied uh, corporate business strategies, and I've also, my passion is analytical tafsir. So tying in a lot of these concepts that we've learned, I formulated a lot of the worksheets in this workbook. So you're going to hear a lot of the repetition of what they've already, mashallah, brought us to, but in formats that we can interpret them into our lives and organize ourselves. So you're going to see worksheets, you're going to see tips and tricks, you're going to have checklists and resource sheets, everything at your disposal, inshallah. So I'm just going to keep th go through. Bismillah. So the first thing I like to do is I like to have a stop and reflect. What does your typical daily schedule look like? When, on a consistent basis, some of you guys might be work, some parents, some might be students. What does your daily schedule look like? When you stop and you break that down, can you think about those items on your daily schedule that are absolutely necessary tasks? Can you think of things that you can break down in that schedule that might not be necessary? And then for the things that are absolutely necessary, do you think that we can find ways to enhance it so that we can better utilize our time? Like Imam Daoud uh, just spoke about, maybe simplifying our meals. I mean, cooking is something that we all have to do. But do we have to spend two hours creating feasts that most times we're not going to be able to eat after we break our fast? So being conscious and reflecting on what we have to do, what's necessary for us on a daily basis, and then putting the steps in place so that we can shorten that time that it's committed from us is just something good to get into the habit of doing on a consistent basis. Just keep reflecting on that. So one thing I like to say is um, for some of the unnecessary tasks that we do, what are some unnecessary tasks that you guys, uh, can anybody in the audience shout some out? Can you think of any? Social media is a very big one. That's a very big, big one for many people these days. So in my Ibad the Swap section, it just, again, has you reflecting. So if you are in social media and you become overloaded, as uh, Ustada Jose said, maybe set some time limits for yourself. You know, instead of being on there for two hours, say, I'm only going to give myself 30 minutes. Or you can try and go the whole month without it. Other alternatives are there are amazing speakers and people to follow that give you inspirational Ramadan tips, that um, get you engaged, that listening, you can recite Quran together, listen to, uh, help you kind of keep you in line. So utilize the resources that you have to your benefits. And then there's lots of other options. For example, if you are somebody who likes to watch the TV and movies during your downtime, there are so many really positive lectures, Islamic movies, inspirational, uh, positive shows that you can uh, gravitate towards during this month just to make your time a little bit more productive and enhanced, inshallah. I'm going to let you guys just read through that and we'll keep going, inshallah. One of the things that was mentioned a lot is food preparation. Uh, it's the effects that our food has on us. So one of the biggest concepts I've learned is that within ourselves, we have to learn how to balance the different parts of who we are. So we have the mind, the body, and then the heart. 
So our mind is kind of like our intellectual goals, those aspirations. Our heart are those emotional connections, or as Ustad Hussein said, those purification elements of the heart. And then our bodies are our physical needs, our physical parts. I want you guys to think, when you are extremely hungry, can you go and maybe ace that exam? Not usually. What about if you heard some really bad, sad news that have you, has you physically in anguish? Like, what, I'm sorry, that has you emotionally in anguish. What happens to your physical energy levels? A lot of times they're down. So being conscious of what it takes as an individual to be productive in all elements is understanding all these different parts of ourself. So one of the things I like to say is for our physical selves, being conscious of the types of food that we put into our body and the effects it has on us is important. SubhanAllah, in our prophetic sunnah, there are so many foods that are mentioned. And when we think about these foods, we look and we see all of their health benefits. Like SubhanAllah, I get goosebumps thinking about that. Because what we're taught in our sunnah is not just lessons to, yeah, okay, that's a yummy treat. SubhanAllah, there are so much wisdom and benefits to us as individuals. If we are eating a lot of, you know, deep fried Oreos, chicken, all this heavy stuff, are we going to have the energies to get to tarawih? If we want to set a goal that every night we're getting to tarawih, we're going to pray qiyam, what are some of the practical steps that we can put in place to actually achieve those goals? So food is a really big one. A lot of people say, well, I like my food. You know, it's my tradition. It's my culture. And that's absolutely true and necessary. It's a positive thing. So instead of just throwing out the tradition, keep the tradition, but refine the recipes. There are a lot of healthy alternatives to some of the heavier elements in our recipes that taste just as good, take just as much time, but will have a different effect on our energy levels. So I go through quite a few, and you guys can get the idea, inshallah. So, <laughs> me personally for Ramadan, I don't want to make it about food. I don't want to spend, honestly, any of my time in the kitchen, preparing, cooking, and cleaning up after it. <laughs> A lot of us uh, know how much time that can take. So personally, what I've done, I was um, a family of six. I would cook and prepare all of my meals for three months. One month prior to Ramadan, one month for the month of Ramadan, and then one month after. So that everything was done. That I didn't have to think about, worry about food at all. So this is one of my, this was one of my family's personal uh, one of the things that, uh, and in, excuse me, that helped enhance my time during Ramadan the most, because when we actually like that schedule, I told you guys to think about where our, all of our time goes on a daily basis. A lot of it ends up going to food. So it would take me maybe six, seven days of hard work, but then three months of not thinking about it. So I go through a lot of different tips and tricks on food preparation in here and a lot of the myths that people have. So typically at these type of workshops, I will actually have had food provided and people would eat and enjoy ahead of time so that you guys can have the energy for this long lecture and discussion. But what I don't tell them is all of the food is actually freezer meals. And then after they've eaten it, they're like, what? No. Because knowing the little tips and tricks and actually trying and giving it a chance, you realize that there's not much of a difference. And then you kind of gravitate your diet and you make good choices based on that. So imagine lots of soups, stews, chilies. Um, and if you don't want to actually have fully cooked meals, then just focus on one part of it. Just marinate your meats. That by itself, think about it. If we had, instead of marinating one different kind of meat every single day, we marinated maybe five pounds of it and had it over the course of a few days, does that not simplify and save time in the long run? Save with cleanliness. We'll just throw it all in the food processor, wash it one time. So subhanAllah, these little tips and tricks really help us maximize our time. And food prep is a very big helpful one. Now, we don't, we don't have as much time. We have about one week left for Ramadan.
So a couple of sisters asked me, well, we only have one week left. How much food prep can we actually get done in one week? You can get a lot done. Every day this week, for the next maybe six, seven days, double your meals. You're cooking anyway. Just double it and freeze one. Then you'll have at least six, seven days worth of meals for those days where you want to make sure you get to tarawih. You want to make sure you do qiyam, but you want to make sure that your family is being fed. Another option would, again, just do meat marination. Get all of that out of the way. Pick one day and do all your food prep. These little tips and tricks help. Uh, for me personally, I, I'm not quite at the extreme level, mashallah, as Imam Daoud, but I will only do smoothies for breakfast. I'll do a date smoothie with bananas every day for suhoor. And honestly, that makes me feel full. It gives me the energy levels. And after Ramadan, with this healthy meal preparation, I leave it feeling so revived physically. So subhanAllah, it's not like the rahmah that Ramadan is. It's not supposed to be a burden on us. If we actually go into it with the right mindset, we feel all of its benefits, even its physical benefits. So. so yeah, there's lots of tips and tricks here. One thing I, got, I get asked a lot is, well, we live in these smaller places, especially in California. How can we have the freezer space? So I, I get into all of that. You can just get freezer bags. You can freeze them flat, and you can stack 10, 20 meals easily, even in the smallest of freezers. And depending on the size of your family, like you guys will adjust, and you can figure out what works best for you, inshallah. You also save money, you guys. Buying food in bulk, buying meats and vegetables in bulk actually helps you save it in the long run. So you'll have more money to donate for sadaqah and zakah, inshallah. For Ramadan. Here I just go through a quick recipe renovation of like a healthy kind of meal prep idea for one day in Ramadan. In the workbook, as I told you, there's an accompanying workbook, inshallah, you'll find lots of different tools to help you maximize on it. So you have the suhoor or, or menu plan, the dinner iftar menu plan, and then the grocery lists. And then to help you, assist you with, if you do decide to go with freezer meals, what's in your freezer? To just know what you have and then organize yourself accordingly. So the one reason I did the grocery list for every single week of Ramadan, because again, shopping happens to be one of the bigger items that takes our time. So if we have a grocery list and we know what we're going into the store to buy, we're going to be fast and we're going to be efficient. We're also not going to be going into the store hungry, buying a bunch of things that we don't need, both unhealthy and wasteful. So organizing that grocery list, going and being disciplined to only get what's on there really helps us stay focused for our goals, inshallah. And as we said, we really don't want to spend Ramadan with a lot of waste. Alhamdulillah, we are fasting during the day. And we have to be aware of our physical capacities. And oftentimes, we can't eat as much as our minds are tricking us into thinking we can because we're fasting. So planning now while you are not fasting helps kind of visualize that. So as, again, Imam Daud, mashallah, said, we want to welcome Ramadan as a guest. If we have guests coming into our house, we go through and we do the deepest cleaning, we're scrubbing, we're organizing, we're getting everything ready and prepared. We are so excited that these people are coming into our homes, our personal spaces. Well, with Ramadan coming, Ramadan is our guest. So I would highly recommend going through a nice deep clean prior to Ramadan. These are all steps that you can do before Ramadan. So that when you come into it, you come into it with the mindset like, Okay, this is my environment. This is fresh. Set up a little prayer space for yourself. Have a masalla. Put on uh, your mushaf, your tasbih. Have all your adqad in one place, place. It really helps you kind of get into the right mind space to best utilize your environment. And then the other thing is, you know, you've gotten a little bit of a head start for Eid. <laughs> so it helps. Alhamdulillah. Obviously, we're still going to have the everyday daily cleaning. But doing that deep cleaning, you know, it really makes a big difference. Um, alhamdulillah. I like to use that example. Um, you know, when we are getting ready to cook 
and we go into the kitchen, if it's messy, do we want to clean? Do we want to cook, I mean? Nobody wants that. So with Ramadan coming, make sure your environment is welcoming of it. And so this is also kind of the fun element, if, if you, especially if you have kids, decorate. There are a lot of simple, affordable ways to decorate the house. Inshallah, I saw a bunch of decorations outside by the vendors. If you guys want to take even the simpler route, you can just grab some, <laughs> inshallah. But this, the, the sheets that I have just help you kind of give you that checklist. Remember things that you might not necessarily have remembered. Oh, another huge time saver. So one year, it was Ramadan, and it was the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And I was like, oh my goodness, I have to go buy gifts. I need to eat clothes for my kids. What am I going to do? So naturally, what do we do? We get in the car, and we go to the mall. While I was there, I was shocked. I mean, I shouldn't be shocked I was there. But it was filled with Muslimin. Like every single store, I saw so many. I, there were probably more Muslims in the mall that time than anybody else. And I kept thinking, I was like, this is the last 10 nights of Ramadan. This is precious time. And we're spending it in the mall. So subhanAllah, we have one week left. If the only thing you do is prepare for Eid, get the outfits done, get the decorations done, get all the gifts done now, Imagine that's one less thing to spend your last, uh, during your last 10 nights, inshallah. So again, yeah, lots of organizers to help you guys remember and so you don't forget anyone. The next big thing that uh, I found really helped save time for me, um, as I mentioned, I have four young boys. And alhamdulillah, these days there are, are so many products and people that inspire us to engage a love of learning with our kids, especially during Ramadan. So when I began, my kids are a little bit older now, but when I began many years ago, there wasn't as many things that we had available to us. So I wanted to make sure that Ramadan wasn't spent just, you know, depriving ourselves of food and then sticking the kids in front of the TV for long periods of time, just because we were exhausted. So what I decided to do was help organize my time and activities for the kids in advance. So again, prior to Ramadan, this is another thing you guys can start planning from now. So everybody likes Taco Tuesday, right? How about Tefsir Tuesdays? Get your family in the habit of getting these fun activities together. Grab Ramadan or Islamic themed books. You know, there are so many actually amazing uh, Islamic games as well that they can play and be um, entertained with during this month that have positive Islamic values. So knowing these things and doing a little bit of time and research, maybe purchasing them in advance, or planning your own activities. You know, this is the time to do it, alhamdulillah. And then again, the calendar and the planner just helps you find it all in one place. And I know, sometimes we just get to those points, we're working, we're exhausted, and we will use the screens. It's inevitable. There is going to be those moments where we are feeling exhausted. So what I highly suggest in those moments is have yourself a YouTube playlist with positive Ramadan content for kids. We have the things that feature Isma al-Husna, the names of Allah. We have beautiful Islamic nasheeds. We have all of these different things, again, to enhance our Ramadan experience, but also being mindful of our physical limitations and our, our emotional, you know, pushing points. So utilize the resources that we have. Just prep it now so that when you're in Ramadan, you're not like scrambling, wait, is that a good content? Is that a good thing? You have something already uh, gravitated towards your children or your family's needs, your siblings' needs. You can be, uh, uh, get the hasanat for helping family out. So, inshallah, it's just something to be reflective of and, and to help in your planning, inshallah. So now we've thought about everyone else. What about our spiritual goals? What about ourselves? Do we want to finish a Qur'an khutmah this month? Do we want to memorize new du'ats? Do we want to um, be more involved in the communities and help with the uh, endeavors that they've already started and facilitated? You know, writing down your daily routine, your daily goals, will help kind of keep yourself on track. So again, when you're tired and you need some kind of inspiration, you can go back like, oh, I wanted to do that today. And again, 
if, if you need to, there are a lot of amazing resources online and virtually where they have 30 days of beautiful content to follow along with. So that's why I always add the links, because we can use technology to our benefit, inshallah, especially during Ramadan. So to help you set your spiritual goals, I have a ton of content, <laughs> alhamdulillah. So I told you I'm very big about intellectual goals, emotional goals, and then also physical goals. So for um, kind of reflecting on the type of different types of ibadah or worship, it's just, it's very helpful. So in here you'll find tons of reflection and writing prompts to get you thinking about all the different elements of our religion. It teaches you how to read, it doesn't teach you, it guides you on how we can read hadith and then not just read it as it is, but learn how to interpret it within ourselves and what the lessons we can benefit from and start actually implementing within our lives, inshallah. And then it's just positive guides to be reflective. For example, having better khushu in our prayer. We're all at different levels. so. Each thing is just meant to help us improve. So when we leave Ramadan, we're feeling like we are one step ahead of where we were coming into it, inshallah. So like I said, there's going to also be tons of helpful resource sheets. So I like to call this uh, also, it's not just preparing for Ramadan, but it's also what I like to use as my ibadah binder. Like, it has everything easily accessible for me. So if I'm going to the masjid, I want, I'll just grab it and go. So it has Isma al-Husna in it. It has it written in Arabic, the transliteration and the meaning. It has al-Qar and, and the helpful benefits of them. It has all the different types of du'ats that you can utilize throughout the month and daily kindness challenges or good deed challenges so that we can give onto others. As Ustada Hussein said, we are a, commu uh, we are a religion that really emphasizes being there for one another in our community. So setting those daily goals for ourselves is really important as well, such as Sirat al-Rahim, maintaining family ties. So there's a checklist to kind of help you remind, remind yourself, hey, you know what, let me call them. You know, we have long commutes. How can we utilize our commutes better? We can call family member. We can listen to Quran. We can do our morning adhqar, subhanAllah. We have lots of opportunities, so these will just help guide you and facilitate it. Uh, one of the things that I love to do, um, especially with, uh, for younger kids and yourself, is if you're looking to, uh, to memorize some dots for Ramadan, what I like to do is I like to copy it, maybe on cardstock paper, and then I'll cut it out and I'll tape it into the area where it's most relevant. So when I was uh, earlier, when I was still learning and and getting familiarized with certain dot, for example, the dot for traveling. Every time I got in the car, I printed it out and I put it on my dashboard. So when I got there, I was like, oh, oh yeah, I have to say that dot. And then the repetition of continuously saying it helps you memorize it, alhamdulillah. So do this with any kind of dot that you're wanting to incorporate. You know, the one where you're looking into the mirror when you're leaving the house. There are so many beneficial ones that we can kind of incorporate into our day. One thing I want to mention before I go on is, you know, Ramadan is, alhamdulillah, a prime time to fast. Uh, but it's not only about the fasting. There are many people that can't fast for different reasons, whether it be for females being incapable at certain times, sickness, or age. So like I said, there are tons of checklist organizers and calculators in here. Um, for physical goals, uh, exercise for me is, is very important for my emotional state of being. So being self-aware, as Ustada Hussein said, has taught me that I need to release some of my energy sometimes. So I have to kind of incorporate times for physical exercise for my emotional intellectual goals. So one of the ways that I kind of advise this, if during Ramadan, um, there are actually tips and tricks within it. But one of the ways that I advise too, if you feel like, like you don't have time, is simple little tricks like if you're going to go to Tarawiyah, park far. <laughs> Intentionally park far. You'll find better parking spaces and then that walk to Tarawiyah 
would do your health a lot of good, inshallah. So little things like that. It's just reframing every act that we do consciously to give us the best chance to accomplish our goals. So another thing that I highly advise is um, vitamins. You know, understanding what our bodies might be lacking, especially during Ramadan when we aren't eating sometimes the most balanced diets. Uh, you know, we might need a little bit of additional help. For me personally, with my gut health, probiotics changed my Ramadans. I was always feeling sick and weighed down. Then when I started taking probiotics consistently throughout Ramadan, it really enhanced the experience. I felt more energy. I was able to get through it without feeling sick. So subhanAllah, vitamins, you know, speak with your doctors, speak with a nutritionist, alhamdulillah, see what your body might need to give you that little boost of energy as well. Um, yeah, it also gives lots of tips for Qur'an khitmah, how to organize iftars because, you know, in a, we will most likely have iftars during Ramadan. Um, so if you do, it just being organized, it really helps assist with that. And then if you are going to miss fast, you don't want to, you know, lose track of the days that you didn't fast. So there's a nice organizer in there for that as well. Um, it also discusses the different types of zikah and sadaqah. It gives you tips and tricks for how to finish a Qur'an khitmah within the month of Ramadan. For example, if you only read four pages a day, uh, I'm sorry, not a day, per salah, with each of your five salahs, you'll finish a khitmah in the month. You'll finish completing the recitation of the entire Qur'an, mashallah. So now we have all of these goals set for ourselves. Where do we find the time? We, we talked about like the little tips and tricks to kind of enter it into our lives. But how do we give ourselves bigger blocks of time during Ramadan? For this, I give two options because as individuals, we are going to gravitate our own personal growth in different ways. So it's important to have different uh, options available to us. So I have the weekly schedule, which is a block calendar. And then we also have the schedule tied to Salah. So when the block calendar, with the block calendar, what you can do is you can write in the time frames throughout your day and then block out all the times that you know that you can't do something. For example, you're at work, you're in class, you're at a kid's activity. Then when the free time blocks that you see, plug it in as if it is work. We wouldn't miss work one day, say, oh, I don't feel like going to work. No, we make the time for it. Ramadan is four weeks long. So if we plug in those ibadah times, those times of worship within our calendar, we should be as consistent with them as we would our normal work schedule or our kids' activities or any other type of event in our lives. So holding ourselves accountable in that manner really helps us stay in line and focused. The second one is our schedule tied to Salah. So a lot of times, making something, turning something into a habit becomes easier if we connect it with something that we're already doing. So like I said, for myself, I'm a very physical person. So I wanted to incorporate more exercise in my life, but I had very young kids. So I couldn't think, how can I find that balance for myself? So what I did was every time I was giving them a bath, I would be in the bathroom right there watching them, making sure they were safe. But then I would do crunches or I would do something physical, like some kind of exercise while I'm sitting there, letting them play, have a little bit of fun. But I disciplined myself that way. And so every time they were giving a bath, I got myself so consistently, uh, I tied it so consistently to that, that it became like a routine. We can do that same concept with our ibadah goals tied to our salah. So our salahs are something that grounds us. It reminds us on, uh, throughout the day to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we're doing that and we're taking the time out for prayer, we can add something additionally into that. We can add our Qur'an recitation in there. We can add our adhqar. Or, like we said, you can sit at al-raham, maintaining family ties, doing um, positive things, subhanAllah. So we can tie it to our salahs just to help instill within ourselves that habit. So now we're in Ramadan and we want to make sure that all of these amazing goals we've set for ourselves are actually being attained. What I provided was a daily check-in for yourself. 
So every day of Ramadan, we have our Salah tracker. We have our fasting tracker, where you are in the Qur'an. And then some points for reflection. So we have like a daily Qur'an gem. So what I highly recommend, don't just read, recite the Qur'an. Definitely recite it, inshallah. But try and learn its interpretation. When we do that, when we reflect on its meaning, we have a deeper connection with it, and we're more inspired to continuously read on a daily basis, leaving Ramadan, inshallah. Also, again, we are a community that thinks of others. So trying to do a good deed every single day, a kindness for others, and reflecting on that so we can continuously add more of that on a daily basis is a really positive thing. Now, we have so many pressures, we have so much going on in our lives. How can we keep our emotions in check? How can we help self-regulate ourselves? So on a daily basis, I give le stress less tips. So every day is a different tip to help you find yourself and ground yourself. Just so that on a consistent basis, we can become more aware when we are feeling emotionally imbalanced and we can put the steps in place to help self-regulate ourselves. Then, of course, sadaqah and zakah. Ramadan is the best time to do our yearly zakah. And alhamdulillah, if we t put in that amount, especially the last 10 nights, it again keeps us on track and keeps us giving, inshallah, purifying our wealth. And then just for those who are, uh, especially, I love this one. I used to love doing it with my kids, and I love it for myself. I like having trivia challenges, but Islamically themed trivia challenges. Because like Imam Dawood said, we want to, kind of make this like our religion engaging and and interesting so by having some funner elements for our kids making it interesting it just helps us stay on track then also reflection section setting exercise goals for ourselves making sure we're drinking enough water so that we are feeling energized and then also the healthy food or dates of the day Now we have little less than a week left to Ramadan. This is the last part. How can we kind of take everything, all of our goals, all of our aspirations, and how can we break it into a to-do list for ourselves? Don't think that tomorrow you're going to be able to sit there and get everything done and, done and you're going to be uh, miraculously prepared for Ramadan. No, you have a week left. Every day set for yourself compartmentalize your tasks into easy digestible amounts so that you're not feeling overburdened or overstressed prior to welcoming and coming into Ramadan, inshallah. And again, uh, one thing that I love to emphasize is utilize the resources in our community. MashaAllah, we have a wealth of knowledge. Um, we have amazing food vendors. We have so much available to us that if we just consciously uh, realize everything that we have and then utilize them in those times where we are feeling exhausted, alhamdulillah, we're giving back to our community, but at the same time, we're helping ourselves. So being mindful of that is um, just something I like to promote. And then this is the final slide, inshallah. Leaving, uh, we were talking predominantly about preparing for Ramadan. But I also really want us to get into the habit of, okay, what, how can I take what I've done and how I've benefited in Ramadan, and how can I move it forward? So one of the best things is just to kind of find balance within ourselves by setting goals in the different parts of who we are. So our mind, our body, and our heart are different types of goals that we can set for ourselves. And then, inshallah, we can turn these things into habits. And next Ramadan, we'll just keep adding and adding and adding, inshallah. So, alhamdulillah, um, I think I've talked quite a bit. <laughs> I wanted to ask if you guys had any questions, any feedback, reflections. Jazakallah. Cool. Sorry. Is there like a soft, soft copy version of this book? I'm sorry, what? A soft copy version, a printable copy? Um, there's not, but it's available on Amazon and Etsy, and uh, we have it on the vendor store outside. Uh, the well. physical book or the soft copy? 
uh, the physical one. Okay, thank you so much. Inshallah, no problem. Any other comments, questions, reflections? Mashallah, this was an easy group. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Thank you for sharing. They seem like really beneficial tips, especially the time saving in the kitchen one. Um, so I had a question. So I know you talked a bit about women who might not be fasting during Ramadan. So I'm breastfeeding uh, this Ramadan. I don't think I'll be able to fast. Do you have any advice specifically for breastfeeding mothers um, on how to make the m most of this Ramadan? Because we won't be fasting. I feel like I'll miss out on a lot of um, feeling, you know, spiritually in touch yeah. with the month. Yeah, alhamdulillah. This was something I feel like is very prominent in our community is like we kind of tie all of our spiritual connection to the ritualistic aspects of worship. But subhanAllah, like um, Ustad Hussein was saying, there are so many emotional connections between our religion. So uh, in, the in the workbook, uh, we talk about adhqar, going over Isma al-Hasna, names of Allah, you know, really connecting with the different parts of our religion, uh, setting intellectual goals for ourselves, donating and vo volunteering your time at the communities. I know you have an, a newborn, so it might be a little bit more difficult with your time. But just being a part of these experiences, don't feel like just because you're not fasting that you can't be engaged, you can't be a part of these type of things. And then there are so many goals that you can set for yourself that I've gone over and there are worksheets for it that aren't tied to fasting. So um, one thing that I used to do, because I have four boys, alhamdulillah, was um, I would set a lot of my memorization goals during Ramadan. Um, so I would um, do my morning adhqar, try and memorize du'ats, and memorize a lot of the Qur'an, as much of the Qur'an as I could during those times where I wasn't fasting. So at least I felt like I had that connection with the Qur'an when I couldn't feel like my physical connection with the fasting was there. Um, and as well, even, although you're, you're breastfeeding, you could still do all of the uh, fard salahs and the sunnah salahs. Um, maybe take turns, if it's possible, with your spouse to go to tarawih, to be engaged in that congregation with the community. It, it really does help your morale um, as, as, a, as a mom, a new mom, mm -hmm. alhamdulillah. Exactly. And then definitely halakas and lectures. I really want to thank MCC for hosting. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, Brother Munir, for all of your efforts, alhamdulillah. And Imam Dawood and Ustad Hussein for contributing, alhamdulillah. Um, Imam, yeah. He left. Okay, khalas. Inshallah. I really wanted him to finish with the du'a, but mashallah, they both finished their sections with the du'a. So um, I'll just close off, and alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khairan again. I pray that we all make it to Ramadan. I pray we benefit from this month. Anything that you may have benefited from today is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that was wrong or incorrect is solely from me, inshallah. Wa'alaikum. Wa'alaikum.